huge honor. I get it. Huge honor. Hello everybody. I'm Huge Honor and it's a huge honor to show you the sheath framework today. This video is a how-to tutorial uh, for models who want to use the sheath framework for their own sheaths. So uh, let's start with this uh, example sheath that I made here, which is basically just the quiver model from the game. And all you really need to do is add a game object. I'm going to call this sheath. And for this, it's fairly straightforward because it only allows for straight uh, weapons. And once you have that, you need to decide where you want the weapon to start. Um, where it basically needs to align um, with the sheath. So we want to start at the tip here in the beginning and then we also need to change the orientation to follow the same way you would have a pierce damager so forward being the blue one and then up the green and right the red one and this tells the sheath framework where the pierce damager should face of the weapon that you're trying to sheath and then the next thing we do is we're going to add a collider. You can use any collider that you'd like. I'm going to use a sphere collider and make sure it's a trigger. And then let's shrink that down to that. This basically determines where you recognize that there's a sword trying to be sheathed. And that's basically all that you need to do. Um, just take a note of this transform how you named it because we're going to need that later for the item chasing uh, but that's basically it i'm going to delete this because i already have one here it's the same way set up the same way but let's say you have a curved weapon like for example a katana how do you do that because if it just follows this straight uh, blue arrow it will obviously not line up um, and i have an example here mila gave me their sheath kindly so i can show this off um, as you can see, a straight line would not work here. And the way I would recommend doing it here is you do the same way. You take the sheath, set up everything the same way as before, but you will now also add points along the sheath that it should follow. Um, they should be evenly spaced and make sure they're in the right order. So it starts from this uh, parent transform and then it goes one by one through the children. Um, and now you're wondering, oh, this is a lot of work. I need to put all these transforms in and I don't really know if it's going to uh, line up. This is uh, where I can show you a little trick. So you can just put the weapon in the same scene and place it in the exact spot uh, where you want it to be. So this is the start spot. So what I can do now is I can take this Pierce uh, Damager and this is already lined up perfectly, exactly how we want it. So all you need to do is duplicate this and then move it onto your sheath. And as you can see now, this is the exact same position as I had it already set up. So you can just rename it, remove the damager, add the collider and everything. And then you just go through the whole process. So I'm gonna have one in the middle as well. So this is the position where it should be in the middle. Again, we're taking the pierce damager, duplicate it, move it, this time as a child of this sheath object you can name it whatever you want but just make sure that the order is correct and as you can see the one is the same one here so i've got that already and for these you don't need any other scripts on there just to transform and then once you've set that up let's do the last one as well this is the final position where the sword should be in um, you're going you're going to take the last pierce damager and move it over and you can see this is the same one and now you've got your sheath set up in unity next up we're going to look at the item json and what you need to set up here so first of all we have the transform name uh, this is where you're going to put the name of the game object that you put the collider on in in my case that was sheath 
And the next thing you can configure is the a filter of what items are allowed or disallowed. So you can put the tag filter any except, and then you can put um, the item IDs of items in there that you don't want to allow and none except for uh, items. So only these items would be allowed. The next setting is max depth. This will specify how far you can sheath a uh, weapon into the sheath. So as we saw earlier, this is all uh, made possible with pierce damages. And so it takes that value, uh, the pierce, uh, the pen penetration depth um, and see how far a sword can go into. But sometimes you may, might want to have a sheath that is shorter and then you don't want the sword to poke through. So you can define the max depth here. And then the snap depth is where you will hear the sound uh, that it's being sheathed and also where all the events uh, happen. So if you, for example, uh, look at the Yamato mod by Genix, um, he does a lot of things when you sheath and unsheath the weapon. And so he needs to have those uh, events in, in his scripts. And he really wanted it to happen at the very end. So zero means it will happen at the very start. And then obviously if you put 0.7 here, it would happen all the way at the end. Then the damper and damper held option uh, basically is a damper. So it makes it harder to pull out or fall out. So when you this one is when you don't have both hands on the sheath and the weapon. And this is when you have like when you're pulling it out. So this is a high value, so it doesn't fall out by itself. And this is a lower value, so it's not impossible to move. Uh, but you can also turn this one on, lock unless held. And that just means that it restricts the movement. So you can't move it at all. And you technically don't need the damper here. And then the next thing would be the audio container location. This is your addressable uh, for a sound when you sheath the weapon. Otherwise, it will just take the one you have set up in your item JSON. Then spawn item ID is the item ID of the item that should spawn with the sheath. So for example, I set it up for the sword sh short common. So it will always, when you uh, spawn the sheath, it will come with uh, the short sword. The next option would be the bad angle. Um, if you want your swords to only be sheathed when they're in a correct uh, angle, then you can set that up. For example, I set it to 45 degrees. So if you try to sheath it from like 90 degrees or anything above 45, it won't allow you. But if you're in those 45 degrees, then it would work. And the same way it works with bad depth, but this time it's uh, about the position. Uh, if you somehow manage to uh, move into the trigger collider from the side, for example, and it is technically already like halfway down the depth, then it would still be able to sheath when you have it set to zero, but you can set this to, I don't know, 0.35. And that would mean that if it's more than halfway down the uh, sheath, you can't do it. So you have to start from the top. And then the holder transform name um, is the name of the transform name of the game object where you have your holder in case you already have a holder uh, for people that don't have this framework. For example, Jenix said that he's going to make it so that you can use his Yamato mod with the framework and without it. And so when you don't use the framework, you're going to use a holder for, because that's how it works in the base game. Um, but if you want to use the framework, then you'd have two holders. So you can define that here and it will uh, remove that holder before it adds the, the sheath. And then the grinding effect ID. Uh, this is the effect that gets played when you uh, move the sword inside the sheath. So it's like this grinding sound. And you can, for example, use the hit met material metal. This is really good for like metal sounding um, sheaths. And then lastly, we have allow reverse. This means that if you have a sword that technically fits in both sides, so uh, you can have it upside down, then you can allow that here. All right, this is the sheet that we made. And as you can see, it works just like you'd expect it to work. 
yeah, and I hope you found this tutorial helpful and I hope you enjoy this mod. And as always, it was a huge honor.